What's going on guys? Jason here from smarthelping.com. What we're going to go over today is some actually very simple calculations, but if you are bad at math or are just starting out and want to know how to calculate return on investment, the dollar amount and the rate, as well as equity multiple, then this will help. And it's going to be a free template. Uh, and mainly I'm just the main value here is I'm telling you what how to do this for free and the template will be accessible in the description box below uh, also please remember to like the video and subscribe I've also just um, developed a membership plan for the YouTube channel so go ahead and join that if you want there's a lot of perks uh, and stuff you can do with the live streams and past live streams um also remember to hit the notification button when you subscribe okay so real simple real simple here we're gonna go period zero we're gonna do 12 periods and actually no 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 we're gonna do 60 and here's why it you could basically use it for any five-year financial model or an annual. You just use, you know, say 10-year annual or five-year annual. That's fine. So you've got 60 periods here, including period zero. Um, cash flows. Out. Cash flows. Well, no, let's just do cash flows. Okay, so you fill that in for 60 months, real simple. We'll say you can edit cells, oop, edit cells in blue text. And this can be used for literally any, even if it's just a one, like a, uh, let's see, cash flows. Minus or plus. So it's clear. You could do this for any kind of deal. It's real simple. Let's say minus 50,000. That represents cash going out. And then let's say period one, you get 10,000 back. Then 20,000. 100,000. 50,000. A million. So you exited the business. So this is, and actually, can we format this? Let's do, let's do this. We don't actually need a dollar sign. So cash in and out. What is your initial investment? Well, any negative values. So total investment, any negative values. We'll just do a sum ifs. So if this range, if in this range is less than zero. The reason why I'm doing that for multiple periods is because, you know, it's possible period one could also be minus, you know, or an investment or a burn. If you're running a business or whatever, you could be investing money over time and then you get money back over time. So total investment is any negative values, total return, any positive, and we can actually just take the same formula, copy, paste, but now we're going to go any values greater than zero. And so here is Oh, we want that to be currency. No. So you put in 60, you got back 170. So what's your ROI? Percentage. Whoop. Percentage would be, well, simply this plus this so you're netting that together 
divided by negative value of your initial investment. So in this case, it's pretty big, 180% or 1,000. Let's say your initial investment was like 500,000. Hundred twenty nine percent essentially saying you've got all your money back plus well so fit so let's let me let's make this easy. Let's say you invested ten and you got twenty dollars back. I'll just put it in zeros for all these. Okay, so simple a hundred percent return on investment. What that means is I took ten dollars, I put it out of my bank account. And then at some point in the future, I got $20 back. So the return on the $10 is 10. And relative to 10, that's 100%. Because 20 total minus your initial, so it's ROI of 100%. Let's say you got back um, only what you put in. Now your ROI is zero. Let's say you got back um, you know, 30. Now your ROI is 200% which is the difference between the return and investment. In this case, that would be 20 divided by the initial investment. That's 200%. So this model is really easy to use, and you can see the logic here. We're also going to do equity multiple. Now, equity multiple is used in all kinds of things, usually in, in real estate. But now this is a little bit different. It's actually more simple. You simply take the total return divided by total investment. And really, you could say that minus one is your ROI. Same, the math there is the same. Now, equity multiple is above one means you've gotten some profit. Below one means you've actually not gotten your money back. Let's say this was uh, nine. So 0.9 equity multiple, you actually didn't even get back your full investment. Uh, 11 is 1.1, and the ROI is 10%. You can see the relationships there mathematically. So equity multiple, ROI, um, and then we'll do uh, ROI dollars, just to say like kind of how much profit did you make, and that's simply going to be um, your total return less your initial investment. And really what you could say is you take that again divided by your investment and you get 10% of the ROI. So there's some relationships there with the numbers. Let's do a bigger number here. Okay, so return on investment is now 750000 uh, One second, sorry. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I think this is pretty good. Uh, I really want to focus on just, because I know people that actually don't know how to calculate return on investment and it's kind of tricky like if you don't understand math intuitively and you've never really seen the terms um you know hopefully this will help you um you can even do a check to make sure you know check make sure you've entered all the numbers right is the sum of this will always equal the sum of all the cash flows check Check. And this should always equal this. True. Perfect. Um, we'll give these a little highlight. Now, we're not getting into internal rate of return, which is completely different. I can show you it real quick. It's really, assuming these are regular periods, not irregular. It's just IRR of every period that's it oh 
top that. Do a gray. And this is called IR. Now that takes into account the timing. So you can see if I did 500,000, but in period one, I got zero back. Two, I got 250. In period three, I got 150, or let's say back 1.5 million again. Now the IRR has gone down. ROI, so here, watch this. So ROI here is 250%. This is still 250, but now look, the IRR is also higher because the cash flow here happened in period one instead of three. So this, the IRR takes into account the timing. And this would be 56%, whatever period. If these are monthly, then this is a monthly return. If these are annual periods, then this is your annual IRR. This ROI is not in any time frame. It's just the total of the entire project itself. Let me just give these some lines here. We'll make these a little bit softer. Soft grid lines are prettier. Cash flows. And then we could just type, you know, return metrics. So if you're ever doing a project, this is a simple way or a good place to start when calculating ROI, equity multiple, total profit, internal rate of return, and a little check here. There's not really a way to back into I. Well, so what this means essentially is the rate you have to compound this at to get to um, the net present value equaling zero. Uh, I guess we could add net PV. So net PV is, um, we'd have to do a discount. I don't know if I want to get into that here. I don't think I do. Um, I don't think I do. Because I have to inform with these numbers. We'd have to discount these. And you could see uh, more of what the IRR means. Essentially, watch this. So. The IRR is 56%. What if I take 500,000 and then I do 500,000 times this plus this? And now let's see, we had three total periods, right? So one, two, three. One million. Uh, let's see, did I do that right? We had 500, we compounded it once at 56%. Then we compound that again at 56%. And again, and then let's see, do this minus this. No, it's the comp. So the internal rate of return is like that. What you have to compound something at to get it in. Hold on, I'm going to figure this out now. This is always, even things like this, you know, sometimes get me. So let's see. This is normalizing the, the rate of return compounded. So let me make this a positive value. So let's say I had 500,000, I made 278 and then We go again, so this is, you start with 500, you're now at this. Seven seventy-eight, and then here, assuming that was paid out, we do another 500,000 times 56. And if it's not paid out, if like there's no cash flow until the end, you would have to keep increasing the balance. But here, let's see, try to see if this makes sense to period two, and then do one more period at 500,000. Now that doesn't track. 
Uh, I'm trying to teach you something here, and I can't even get it. Uh, let me think. Let me think. So this is one million three thirty six. Because this is saying what these cash flows have to be discounted back to, so that the present value of them in period zero here equals negative five hundred thousand. Um. So I guess these these aren't so these numbers here are not going to ever match what we've got here. But what it's saying, what the internal rate of return is saying is, look, your annualized compounded rate on 500,000 is 56% on average. Even though like here you got zero, here you get, you know, 50% and here you're getting 150%. But it's taking the the timing into account. So eight thirty six. So here your, your actual ROI is one million two fifty, but if you look at the IRR, no, don't even listen to this. This is now the internal return is always unless I've brushed up on it, it's so difficult. Let's just do let's do this. So let's see if negative five hundred thousand. Here's what the IRR will do. Okay. I think so let's do this times here <laughs> we're gonna get this uh this here but you had no no um cash flow so now your equity balance is 778 now the next period you so you're here you get cash flow back of 250 and now This plus this, 528. There's a more elegant way to do this, and I have different models for it, but we're doing it, trying to do it from scratch here. Times the rate. And then the final period, you get back 1.5. Zero. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> so I, so I have to, 671. Now that doesn't track anything. Let's do, okay, so you had 500,000. Return due was 278. You got none back, so now you're about to 778. So we go back to 778. Now the return due is this times 56 percent. Let's format this. Now the return due on that is 434, and what you actually got was 250. So now the balance is here, and then here, now your return due is this times 56% again. Plus the 1.5. Now we're close here, 1,250,000. I don't know if this means anything. So if you start with 500, you do a 56% return, you got nothing back, so your balance is 778, you carry it. You go to 778. Now your return due is 434. You got back to 150.
So the balance is now this plus this plus this. Then you go to 963. 56, we actually got 1.5. You go this plus this plus this. Zero. Okay, I believe we got to the right answer. I believe, because that would not be zero if we didn't. And that's a hard zero. So what we did is simply you're compounding this. Didn't get anything back, so here's your balance. You got Now you're at 778. You should be getting this back. You only got this. Now your balance is here. 960. Your new return should have been this. You got back 1.5. Now your balance is zero. And this is a backwards way of figuring out your net present value. So like if this was like, uh, let's say 850. See this, always it always default falls to zero. Unless, I'm assuming if it's less... Ah, yeah, negative 21%. So this rate, this IRR is always applied to here. And it's this rate is figuring out how to get back to zero. Okay, so sorry for the confusion, but this should give you some idea of what the IRR is doing. I don't, I didn't really want to get that complex into it, but there you go. I'm not, uh, I guess I could keep that up for fun. Um, deep dive, I'm going to call this. There you go. Okay. Uh, well, happy Friday. I'm headed out. Um, I'll probably be back uh, Monday with the live stream at 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, finishing up, well, continuing on the vending machine financial model, uh, the ramping model, which is really cool. We got some new logic in there. I can't wait to get into it with you guys. So uh, enjoy this. This is, again, for a basic level um math person who's just getting into finance or just wants to know may not be in finance just wants to know how to calculate roi and then if you really want to get far into it you've looked at all this stuff with the internal rate of return and you can see what is going on there and that's that's the whole joy of fun there with the internal rate of return uh all right i am out for the weekend